everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm here to do my weekly wrap up. I'm a little tired. <laughs> I've been back and forth to Sudbury twice this week, actually in the last four days. I went Friday to pick up my machine that had to get serviced. And then I went yesterday to pick up my new multi-needle, which is why I didn't make a video yesterday. So I was kind of out of town. Um, but I did finish seven books this, last week. Um, four of them, five, were on Halloween. Um, I did make it, barely, by the skin of my teeth, but I did it. And then travel time, it's hard to read with my husband's driving. Um, he's a bit of an insane driver, but he's safe. So, anyways, <sighs> the first book I finished, or I can't even remember the order, I tried to put them in order of stack. So, uh, Slasher Girls and Monster Boys, story selected by April Genevieve Tohoke. Um, I gave this a four. I really love most of the stories. Uh, I can't even remember which one was my favorite, though. Uh, yeah, I love most of them. But right now, <laughs> my brain is not functioning. So, definitely a four star. They were all creepy. Not really scary, but kind of mind play, sort of. Now, <laughs> unpopular opinion. I gave this a two. Um, you by Carolyn Kepnes. I didn't root for him one bit. Everybody says you kind of root for him, you fall in, love, fall in love with him. Nope, I hated him. The whole entire time, I hated him. I cannot get behind romanticizing um, stalkers. And he truly was a stalker, and it's creepy as hell. Um, the ending was as I expected, and I don't know how this is getting... Like, the writing is good. I can't get behind that. Sorry. Um... I will read the next books because I hear they're a little bit different. So, yeah, but Joe was not a good guy. So, sorry. Uh, in the case you're new to booktube, books, whatever, um, it just shows Joe stalking a woman that he meets at... Oh, she came into his... The bookstore that he runs and he starts getting obsessed with her immediately and he has these inner dialogues of what he wants her to say and it's just it's creepy as hell um the next one i finished was aristotle and dante dive into the waters of the world um it's book two of the aristotle and dante series i loved it i gave it a five loved it this is what i wanted from the first book it, <sighs> apollo's in a mood um, it just continues on their story. I'm not going to say too much, um, but they are really coming into their, um, are coming to terms with their sexuality. And here's Apollo. And kind of not only coming to terms with that, but coming to terms with the relationship. And yeah, I really, I really loved it. Um, five stars and... I might even want to get a copy myself. Then I finished In the Wild Light by Jeff Sentner, and I gave this a five as well. It's got a couple of my favorite phrases, um, or paragraphs, whatever. <sighs> this, I connected with this so much because it kind of mirrored my own life in a lot of ways. Um, Oh, I can't even remember his name right now. Um, Cash. Cash and Delaney. Cash is raised by his grandfather, or grandparents, actually. And I wasn't raised by my grandparents, but I had a very close relationship with my grandfather. Um, cats. And so he, his best friend Delaney, who's an outcast, because she's a nerd, um, She get, finds this um, bacteria in a cave that's local. 
And she sends it off to a doctor or a scientist, sorry. And she discovers it's a bacteria that fights against the antibiotic resistant bacteria. So it's better than penicillin, all that stuff. So she gets a full scholarship to this boarding school to finish out high school. And she says, I will go as long as you allow my best friend Cash to come. And so Cash struggles to go and leave his grandfather who's dying of emphysema. My grandfather died of emphysema. Um, so I, I could see it all. I could picture it. I was right there. And then he talks about <laughs> his grandfather's favorite album was Copperhead Road by Steve Earle. Now that wasn't my grandfather's, but the year or the summer before he died, I listened to that album heavily with my best friend who died. Um, that was the summer of 95. So she died this sum, um, November of 90, 95. My grandfather died February 7th, 96. So Copperhead Road really was a major album that I listened to back then. So that kind of hit the spot as well. And, oh, I, I really love this. It, yeah. And I won this um, from Library Thing. So thank you to the publishers for sending it to me for an honest review and hands down five stars. Um, loved it, loved it, loved it. And it, I probably loved it because one, I love Jeff Sentner's writing, um, but two, it, it resonated with me quite a bit. And I did cry. Three out of four of his books have made me cry. So there's that. And then I finished Baby on Board by Lisa Ruff. I gave this a three. I didn't like um, Kate. I liked, oh, Patrick, but I didn't like Kate. She gets pregnant. He's a yacht racer. He's gone for three months, only contacts her once. And then he comes back to pick up where they left off. And she's like, nope, I'm pregnant. And well, she didn't tell him she was pregnant, but she wants to find a different daddy for her babies because, or her baby because she doesn't feel that he's father material. She doesn't give him a chance. He tries. She just says, nope, you're not father material. And done. He has an issue with that. And she's like, you don't need to be in the baby's life. It's my baby, not yours. And he's like, ah, no, I don't think so. So there's this back and forth. And he's trying so hard. And she refuses to give him a chance. She's stuck in her ways. She won't even open up to allow him to try. And it's just, she's got this idea stuck in her head. And she just refuses anything to do with him being a dad. So I gave it a three. The writing was good. And I like Patrick because he tried. He really tried. Because he wanted to be a part of this baby, baby's life. So. And she also refused to allow him to have a say in who was going to be near his child as a father figure. You know. She was also demanding that he drop his whole entire life to be a dad, if or if he wanted to be a dad. But she wasn't willing to give up anything. To, like, she wasn't compromising. She would not allow any compromises. It was her way or no way. And that was it. So, give it a three. Then, I don't have a picture, um, but I, I listened to the Bromance Book Club uh, by Lisa K. Adams all on Sunday. I started it in the morning and I r listened to it the whole entire day. I was listening to it while I was cooking <laughs> and then I, I was done doing whatever so I just sat and listened to the last 15 minutes of it and I gave it a five. I loved it. I could understand the hype. Um, some things were kind of, you really should be doing that but and I really wanted more of the book that they read in that book. And then I just found out as I was doing my review for it on Goodreads that she is writing that book. Um, Courting the Countess, I think it was called. So yeah, we get that. And I'm so excited to read that. But uh, what were the names? 
Anyways, it's a book club of men that get together and read these historical romance books to try and make the relationships better. And it's hilarious. Um, there are some funny bits that are placed perfect timing to ease the seriousness of what's going on in the series or the, the story. So he's a, excuse me, major league baseball player. And he thinks the marriage is hunky dory. Um, she, on the other hand, has a different opinion and things come out. I'm not going to say, um, and she kicks him out and then she gets mad because he left. One of those deals, but it was so good. The writing was awesome on it and I cannot wait to read some, the rest of the series. And I plan on buying that series. I love it. Hands down. Love it. And then I finished this um, on the drive home. North Country Man by Carrie Alexander. So this is about Noah and Claire. Claire works for this big hotel chain and she scouts out floundering um, businesses for the hotel chain to buy and make into a luxury hotel. Noah is a former smoke jumper who is kind of ostracized hermit. Um, it's a small town in Michigan that it doesn't exist, but a small town in Michigan that, um, you know, this one major wealthy family, um, one of the sons has died because of this fire and he's scarred and everybody has blown it all out of proportion, making him this massive head to toe scar man who's a hermit and he's evil, and vile and whatever. So she meets up with him because she thinks he's a bear on the side of the road at night. And because she had hit a deer and kind of crashed into a, a stump and she thought he was a bear and it's funny, but he does have a um, bear cub that he had found. He nurses um, injured animals and then releases them. And then he also makes um, hand carved wood from like dead logs furniture. So, yeah, it's, and there's also a quirky little thing that if you sleep all night in the bridal suite, by the end of the year, you will be married. If you are a married couple that sleeps in the bridal suite, you will be divorced by the end of the year. So it's kind of a little quirk because of the, the ghost story. That was really cute. Um, so I gave this a four. And that is what I finished this week. So, I currently reading, well, currently reading Still Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I'm almost done it. Um, most of this is appendixes. Uh, so, I have this much left, this middle part left to read. And I'm slogging through it. Um, I think I only have two or three chapters left. Thank God, because, ugh. As you know, I don't DNF books. I'm, I have to be a completionist. So I will finish it slowly, but surely I will finish it this week. Definitely. Um, but yeah, he makes a, a monster and hates it. And as far as parenting, he's, he sucks. Um, but he has this, woe is me. My life is crap. Um, please pity me. Feel sorry for me. And he goes off on tangents and when he's not getting his own way, he gets sick for months. Okay, I'm going to put that off to the side. And then I just read the first page of Forbidden by Beverly Jenkins this morning. It's historical romance. Right after the Civil War, um, he passes for a white man. And that's all I know. That's pretty much all I know. So what I'm going to be starting this week. Oh, and I also have a small library book haul and a small book haul. Uh, I'm going to start Seven Years to Sin by Sylvia Day. I don't know much about it. It's just, it's just Sylvia Day. Um, a young man forced to sell his body for money. A young lady who watched him do it. Sorry, cats are on a terror. Two tormented souls brought together years later to assuage the hunger of a desperate, irresistible attraction. 
Sylvia Day is known for her Sexy Times books, so there's that. And then I'm hoping to pick up Elevation by Stephen King because it's nice and quick and easy. Don't know much about it. Um, all I know is it's Castle Rock. So. And then People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This is about two friends who went on vacation every year. Something happens and she starts going on her own and then starts missing him. And they decide to try it one more time. And... But all I know. So that's going to be my week. Um, as for my library book haul, I'm there every week. So, but these are just the ones that I've decided to show or have not shown. Taylor Adams, No Exit, um, gets caught in a snowstorm at the dead end. 13 hours, four strangers, one missing child, no exit. She knows her odds, she'll find out anyway. I've heard it was good, so we shall see. And then The Startup Wife by M Tamima Anam. I really don't know much. Brilliant coder Asha Ray has her future all mapped out. Then a chance meeting and whirlwind romance with her high school crush, Cyrus, changes everything. Dreaming big, together with their friend Jules, they come up with a radical idea to build a social media platform that could bring meaning and connection to millions of lives through personalized rituals. What caught me is the, the spine. And I just saw it there and thought, eh, why not? Then I picked up The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. Um, I saw it there. And I know it's a World War II um, concentration camp where a boy on the outside starts talking to a Jewish boy on the inside through the fence. I think. Hmm. If you start to read this book, you will go on a journey with a nine-year-old boy named Bruno, though this isn't a book for nine-year-olds. And sooner or later, you will arrive with Bruno at a fence. Fences like this exist all over the world. We hope you never have to encounter one. So I know it's about, um, like, racism and not even racism. It's elitism, classism, religion. Fights? You know what I'm trying to say. Then I saw this there. I didn't. I just thought I'd pick it up. It's Woman of Power, book one. Um, Chosen for Power by Kathleen Brooks. Um, she's a high-powered woman. Um, somebody is out to destroy Elle Simpson and everything she's worked hard to build. As the CEO of a corporate conglomerate, Elle is used to fighting off challengers. However, this is... This new threat comes at a time when she finally lets her guard down to meet Prince Charming. And it's unlike anything she's been up against before. Drake Charles's work on mobile technology has made him a wealthy, powerful man. And that's as far as I'm going to read. But another high, high muckety muck. Sexy times. And then I saw um, Murder at the Beacon Bake Shop by Darcy Hannah. It's the first in the series. Um, the Beacon Bake Shop Mystery Series. That's all I know. More interested in kneading dough than adding it up, Lindsay's breakup inspired her to set up the shop she always wanted in a place that always made her happy. She'd spent many childhood summers near this beach community and converting the old rundown lighthouse into a bakery cafe and home offers a perfect fresh start for Lindsay and her devoted Newfoundland dog, Wellington. And somebody has a sweet tooth and dies. And the last book I picked up was Pause for Murder, uh, first in the Pet Boutique Mystery. And it's Izzy's own beloved pets are dressed to the nines for the grand opening of Trendy Tales. Feisty feline Jinx is large and, char oh, large and in charge. And Happy Mutt Packer is lapping up the attention Izzy and her best friend Rena have their hands full meeting Maryville's Menagerie and serving tasty pup cakes and kitty canapes from their bakery. Barkery, sorry, Barkery. The last thing they need is Sherry Harper, the town's local activist, scaring off customers and getting tongues wagging by picketing the event. And she's murdered. So that is my library book haul. Then I have a book haul. Now I canceled this the day before it was shipped, so I still have to pay for it. But 
Some of these are parts of series, so I'm not going to read them or what they're about. Um, A Hostile State by Adrian Megson. I think this is like book 24 or 23 in the series, but it's like spies. Um, CIA. So there's that one. And then there is One Night Gone by Tara Laskowski. Um, I don't think this is part of a series. It's just a standalone suspense thriller. One sultry summer, Maureen Hathaway arrives in the wealthy town of Opal Beach to start her life anew to achieve her destiny. There, she finds herself lured by the promise of friendship, love, starry skies, and wild parties. But Maureen's new life just might be too good to be true, and before the summer's up, she vanishes. So that's as far as I'm going to read on that one. Hiding Place by Megan Holloway. I'm not sure. I love that wolf, though. Um, I'm not sure if this is a series. I think it is, so I'm not going to read. Yeah, I think it is, but I can't remember the number that it is in the series. Previous, yeah, it's second. So Hunting Ground is the first one. So here's Hiding Place. And then the last one I got is Voice of Fear um, by Heather Graham. It's the new Crew of Hunters, or a new or newer one. I think another one came out after this, or did it? No, this is 2022. So this is like book three in the series, so I'm not going to read. But I know it's um, Sarah from A uh, Bookish Knitter terms this series as um oh why can't I think of the name of that series to show um X-Files but with ghosts instead of aliens and stuff like that so there's that one and then I was contacted by this author to read his book he says it's coming out in January but it's been on Amazon so he sent me a coffee copy and I'm not even going to try and butcher his name, <laughs> but this is, um, a wizard's dream. And look at that cover. It's gorgeous. It's purple and blue and, oh, that just makes me so happy. But his name is, oh, let's see. I know it's but Butkovich or but Butkovich. No. Chick? Butkovic? That's his name. I, I really can't even think of how that's pronounced. Huawei? I'm, I'm not even going to try. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so he sent me a copy of it. Because um, he's in South Africa. So, I don't know... If, if I'm going to start it this month or wait until next month to read it, we shall see. But it is very small print. But it is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. And it's fantasy. So it's born into a living, feeling world risen from primal waters. Aja, or yeah, Aja, the dream seer, roams the mystical plains forged by the wizards. She faces the horrors lurking in the underworld, twisted conceptions teased out by chaos, the fires of purgatory. Seeking to remake her and the tender, tenderers of dreams dwelling in the heavens. Aided by the goddess of her land and stalked by death himself, she stumbles upon a secret of life and a vision of what her world could be. So I think there's Fae in here as well. Fae and fairies. So I'm looking forward to reading this. So thank you um, to the author for sending me this. And that is it. That is my book haul, my library book haul, my weekly reads, my currently reading all that jazz. Life updates. Why not? Um, if you stuck around this long, please don't forget to give me a like. Um, subscribe if you haven't to, and please comment down below. I like talking to you guys in the comments. I may not get to them immediately, but I do try and get to everything. So I hope everybody has a wonderful week, and I will talk to you later. Bye.